Hey everyone, welcome back to the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel where we bring modern medicine to strength and conditioning and strength and conditioning to modern medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum, and this is training vlog number 34. I went to a powerlifting meet and I wanted to bring you guys with me. All right, walking to the San Diego Fit Expo, gonna weigh in. It's actually right down the street from my place. It's like a 20 minute walk, so I figured get some steps in today, enjoy the scenery and sounds of San Diego. So try to figure out where this thing is, go weigh in. I'm gonna guess 205, uh, 204 and a half, something like that. Uh, we'll see how right I was. I don't want no combo, I want checks. I don't want the second, I want this. I'm all in my ass, way, I'm a wreck. I've been moving like a hot. All right, just weighed in uh, 93.6 kilos, so 205, just like I thought. Uh, I'm gonna go home, uh, eat second breakfast, I ate this morning, and uh, yeah, chill out the rest of the day, come back tomorrow, and do some damage. So obviously I did not cut to the 90 kilo or 198 class like I normally do, rather I just weighed in what I normally weigh in at, which is about 93 kilos or 205. Um, I'm about 5'10", and I just walk around at 200 to 205. It's my normal walking around weight, and I just didn't want to cut for this meet. Rather, I was more focused on the performance at this meet. I really had some all-time uh, PRs that I wanted to hit, and I just didn't want to mess around with cutting. Uh, in fact, I just ate what I normally ate throughout the week. I ate breakfast the morning before I weighed in. Um, could I have cut to 90 kilos? Sure, it probably wouldn't have been a big deal. So the reality is I just didn't want to add any extra stress to this meet. It was super convenient going to this meet. It was right down the street from me. I walked there. The venue was nice. A lot of people there, big crowd. Uh, so yeah, it was going to be a lot of fun and I didn't want to like sully any of that uh, by cutting weight. Will I ever go back down to the 90 kilo or 198 class again? Maybe. It really just depends on what the focus is on the meet. If I want to be competitive, uh, you know, to win the meet or win best lifter, um, which is usually uh, scored on Wilkes or something like that, or set an all-time top 20 total in a particular weight class, yeah, obviously uh, I would want to do that at the lightest body weight possible with the highest total. That being said, I don't know that those are my goals right now. Rather, I just have some numbers that I want to hit. So for the foreseeable future, I'll probably just weigh in at my normal walking around body weight. And uh, as I keep trying to add uh, lean body mass, you know, slowly but surely, try to get a little bit stronger. Um, I don't know that my body weight is actually going to trend down. All right, day of the meet, heading to the uh, actual spot where we're going to lift, but we're in the middle of a Fit Expo convention center. It's like a ghost town in here right now. Like, uh, <laughs> where's everybody at? Where are all the Fit Spos? I don't, uh, I don't smell the the white rain, and I, I don't see any glitter dust in the air. Coming up on the venue, here we go. That's it, that's where we're gonna be. So, get uh, set up, changed, and uh, ready to do battle today. All right, so we'll start out here on the squat attempts. All right, so we start off, this is 260 kilos, 573. Um, now Leah's filming from the front using my camera. There's like this barrier though, so some of the videos are actually cut like at the bottom. Um, it'd been nice to pan down, but we have some side views uh, that Claire took. Claire, uh, Zai was actually uh, handling me. She's a big help. You see her in the background there. She's actually competing this weekend, so good luck to Claire. Good depth, good speed. I can't see my feet, so I wanna see if I actually shifted back at all, but yeah, good squat. Nice way to open, and so from there, I jumped to 272.5, but let's watch this again from the side. So again, this is 260 or 573. Uh, good walkout, probably too many steps, but that's just, you know, what I like. Depth is good. Yep, yeah, no problems there. Okay, so second attempt was 272.5. Just trying to get that bar nice and low on my back. I have a tendency to sometimes have it a little high, like about a half inch high. It's uh, not so great. This is 600 pounds, 601. You notice I look up to get the squat command. And so yeah, from this angle, I mean, that's pretty good speed there for 600. I wish that guy would stop touching me, it's kind of weird. But I actually uh, missed that squat, so it was two reds to one white. They said that I was at parallel. Uh, did that I didn't quite go low enough. So we'll check it out from the side. This is again, not the greatest angle because it looks like it's above hip level um, and also from behind. So it can kind of lie to you. Preferred angles directly from the side if you're gonna look at depth um, right at hip height. But we'll check this out. Yeah, he keeps touching me on my belt. I wish, I don't like that. Yeah, so I mean, I agree that it wasn't uh, buried certainly. And so I agree with their ruling. So I stayed the same. Um, I was hoping to get up to 280 on my squat, uh, so you know it took some some kilos off. But I just repeated uh, 601 again. This is 272 and a half kilos. 
And you know, the problem after you get called on depth, I've never been called on depth before in my entire life, um, is that it's hard to just do the same squat. You really want to focus on depth. So yeah, much slower tempo. And then, you know, that's probably harder than I wanted it to be. But uh, I got depth, uh, I got three whites, and I was pretty psyched about that. Yeah, so that's a meet PR uh, for me in knee sleeves. So the most I've ever done in a full powerlifting meet prior to this was actually 573 in knee sleeves. So that was a, a 27 pound PR. And we'll watch this again from the side. So yeah, had to go much uh, slower just to make sure that I got down there and didn't rebound off that. But yeah, that was a good squat, uh, three whites. So went into bench, opened up here. This is 185, get my grip set, set the arch. Yeah, so no problems there. I felt like that was, you know, uh, right on par for what my opener should be. This is 192.5, 430. I've actually hit this in a meet twice before. Uh, Claire's giving me good handoffs. Yep, good pause. And I thought that was pretty easy. I thought that moved very well. So I rated that like an eight and a half. So after 192.5 moved so well, I uh, jumped up to 197.5. Just wanted to uh, make a nice conservative jump. Yeah, it touched a little low there. Yeah, that makes sense then. This is actually the first time I've watched any of these videos. So um, yeah, uh, the bench thing, I'd hit 192.5, 430 in competition twice prior to this meet. Uh, so once in 2014 and once in the meet in May, and I missed 195 at the meet in May. Um, bench actually, this training cycle didn't go that well. Um, so 197.5, I would have taken that uh, meet PR, that would have been great. I've hit 200, uh, 440 in training before, and uh, I didn't want to get greedy. As fast as 192.5 moved, I had considered calling for 200, because that would have put me on track, or at least back on track towards hitting, um, uh, or tying my, my best total. Um, in any event, I thought 197.5 was gonna be conservative. On that particular rep, I just touched too low, and I think it's just too heavy to mess up. So that was me, that was my fault on that one. Um, so definitely one thing to work on going forward, you know, just in addition to getting stronger, but just making sure to execute. Um, would not recommend touching the bar too low at uh, PR or uh, near PR levels. All right, so moving on to deadlifts. This is 305, 672. Uh, this ties my best triple in the gym. A pretty conservative opener. I do like making big jumps on the deadlift. So let's check this out. Yep, pretty good, moved fast. You see I get one red in the background. Uh, my right knee apparently wasn't locked all the way out. I'll take the two to one uh, decision. Uh, it was a, a decent pull. So that being said, my warmups actually didn't feel that great. And on the platform, that didn't feel that great either. So my plan was to jump to 330, uh, which is 727. Uh, but instead I jumped to 325, which is 716. Effectively, I thought 325 would be a hard rep, but not a limit rep. And then 335 would have probably been my a max for the day. That's that was the plan. So uh, next attempt here was 325. Little little barking during the walk up. And smile. You gotta smile. You know you're supposed to be having fun. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, it was a little little uh, little forward. The bar is a little forward off the floor. Probably made it feel a little slower. Yeah. But I got three whites, pumped about that. Um, yeah, so I jumped actually to 330 um, because again, 325 didn't feel like this total smoke show where it's like, oh, you have so much left in the tank, you could go tie your best uh, training pull. So I thought again, I'd be conservative and just go to 330. So that's the plan. 330s loaded on the bar. That's uh, 727. My best pull in a meet is 725. So it would have been a two pound PR. Although those were not on calibrated kilo plates. Um, so the, the further this, the plates are spaced up off the bar, the more it'll whip and calibrated kilo plates don't take up that much space on the bar. So there's some discrepancy there. Yeah, and that bar, I mean, I'm just uh, behind the bar. I can tell, um, super frustrating. Uh, honestly, deadlifts were going the best out of any of my lifts all throughout training. I pulled 700 a number of times in training. I had rep PRs. I hit uh, an all-time PR of 335 kilos, 738. <laughs> Crazy, got a trillion for real. They've been trying to be better resilient for real. I can't go in public like a 
And yeah, so deadlifts were just going super well. Uh, I was unsure why uh, things felt like they did um, at this meet. So overall, the meet was good, but not great. And that's kind of what I told Claire and Leah and anybody who's been asking, you know, hey, how did it go? It was a good meet, but not a great meet. I performed well, I set a, a squat PR. Um, my total went up about 50 pounds from the uh, last meet I did in May. So. Um, I can't be upset about it. I'm just not satisfied with the numbers that I was actually shooting for and that my training actually kind of indicated. Um, first, having to take my uh, second squat again because it was high, um, it didn't rattle me. It just definitely threw me off the plan. The plan was to try to go up to 280 kilos. Um, that would have set me up for success there. So uh, it was problematic having to repeat 272.5 because I, already I was in a hole. So um, definitely want to work on making sure that each rep that I do, no matter if it's a rep effort set or pin squats or, or competition squats, that all of them are done to competition depth. I mean, sometimes this happens. I've never been called on depth before, so it was really surprising, but you know, it do be like that sometimes. Um, on bench, my bench actually was not going very well in training. The heaviest bench that I had performed in training was actually 192.5. And in contrast, my bench training prior to the meet in May, I'd actually pin benched 200 kilos. So um, things weren't going uh, terribly well, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna set an all-time bench PR at this meet. Um, but that being said, at the meet, things really did come together for my bench press. Uh, 192.5 felt so good. Uh, 197.5, I was sure that was gonna go. And honestly, if I wouldn't have touched it too low, if I wouldn't have made a technical error, um, I think it would have been there. So that's my bad. Um, I, I really do like the taper that I did for my bench um, for this particular meet. Um, so I think I'll use that again. I do think that the training leading up to the meet is gonna be a little different with a little bit more volume and uh, maybe use some of the variations that I prefer a little bit more like pin bench. I didn't use this time around where I did use like a five count pause bench. Um, I did bench with chains this time around, whereas last time I was using the slingshot a little bit more. So uh, I think uh, I'll have uh, some variations be changed and then I'll still use the same taper though because that worked really well. Um, squat programming I think was spot on, squat taper spot on. Um, the only real thing that was confusing to me was my deadlift. I pulled that 738 in training that felt so good and then to get to the meet and my deadlift was kind of flat. I mean even during warm-ups and I don't know if I was just tired you know just from the squat uh, from the from the bench press and then being at the meet seems unlikely. I mean, I have a few squat bench deadlift days in training. So there, one option would be to increase the frequency of doing the squat bench deadlift days to make sure the conditioning is on point and that, you know, kind of used to doing those uh, when you go to the meet. So that's one option. And then two, the taper I use this time for my deadlift. I don't think that I would do that again. Um, one thing that I've been worrying about is, or thinking about at least is that like the more well-trained you become, the better you are at tolerating the training in general and recovering from the training. I was worried that if I didn't pull anything during the week leading up to the meet, that I actually would get uh, significantly you know, weaker, detrain a little bit. And the meet was on Sunday. So um, on Monday, I actually pulled uh, my, my opener and then I pulled some back offsets uh, at like 561 or something like that, some sets of five. And I didn't think anything of it. And, you know, maybe it doesn't mean anything, but I know that uh, traditionally my uh, taper on the deadlift is I actually uh, don't pull anything the last week. One, I get to let my hands heal up. Two, um, I just typically have not done any pulls and I, I get to uh, kind of um, recover a, a little bit better by not pulling. So I think the next meet, I'm just not gonna pull the week before the meet, even if it is on a Sunday. I just, you know, that's worked well for me historically. Uh, I just you know, thought this time I'm gonna uh, maybe, maybe uh, take it up a notch. Uh, with respect to performance. So I, I messed that one up. That's that's on me. And uh, maybe some more squat bench deadlift days. And uh, we talked about the squat and the bench already. So overall, good meet, not a great meet, still chasing this 1800 uh, pound unicorn uh, total. So I'd like to do that. And uh, we'll look for a meet maybe uh, first quarter 2020. I've got a lot of uh, travel coming up, a lot of barbell medicine events. Hope to see you guys there. Um, but yeah, we'll plan for something first quarter 2020, take another run at this uh, 1800 pound total. And then finally, you guys write so many funny comments on these videos most of the time. Most of the time they're funny or they're questions and we, we uh, answer them. But I wanted to read some of them because these uh, these were great. So uh, this is from the last training vlog. Uh, Drew Singh says, I lose brain cells when you don't post vlogs. <laughs> I lose brain cells when I don't post vlogs. Or maybe I lose brain cells when I'm editing the vlogs because I stare at the screen for too long. 
I don't know, but I'm gonna keep posting them. If I if I start getting dumber, just let me know. Um, Huffman Tree says, good to see you, Jordan, and your appearance on the Iron Culture podcast was great, by the way. I enjoy it when you mingle with other fitness personalities and expose them to Barbell Medicine's approach. Thanks, man. Yeah, so I was on the Iron Culture podcast uh, with Omar Isaf and Dr. Eric Helms and uh, Dr. Quinn Hannock and Nick and uh, Omar Isaf. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a good time. Uh, so if you guys haven't checked that episode out, it's literally all about pain. And we talk about uh, the biopsychosocial model, the biomedical model, and uh, there's a lot of practical little pearls in there. And uh, apologies to Nick in advance. I forgot your last name and I'm recording this thing and I know you're a great guy. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a really cool. It's a really cool episode, though. So check check that out. Back to basics says I'm just saying, grow your beard out. It will definitely add 10 kilos to your current lifts. Like if I had a beard that came down here, I just feel like as much as I travel, I don't want to be on a TSA no fly list. Like I feel like, you know, it it's got potential. So maybe. But you know, Alan does fine. So maybe if we had matching beards, people would either think that we're ZZ Top, or you know. I'd be fine, so maybe, maybe. Um, in any event, thank you guys so much for watching uh, the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel. Thanks for watching this vlog. Make sure to subscribe if you wanna stay up to date with all the latest content. Leave a comment below. I might read them on our next vlog. And then if you wanna submit your own form checks, your own questions, anything like that to be answered right here on this YouTube channel, send them over to media at barbellmedicine.com. If you're sending over a lifting video, please turn your phone sideways. Okay, make it landscape, uh, ideally 1080p or higher, and send me a set of like five, six, uh, multiple reps, not just a single. And uh, yeah, if it's good, we'll uh, put it on the old uh, YouTube channel and give you a form check. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you next time. See ya.